My name is Alex Klotz. I'm a physics professor at California State University in Long Beach, and I'll tell you about my current favorite number that's over a million. So I have here two loops of cable, and I'm going to take one of them, tie it in a knot like so, and then just hold the ends together so that mathematicians don't get mad at me. So there's a lot of things you can do with this knot. You can tighten it, you can loosen it, you can fold it around, but there's no way to make this look like this uh, without um, opening it up, untying it, and closing it back together. So we can say that this is a non-trivial knot, whereas this isn't. Um, now, of course, there's more than one different kind of knot. I could take this one. I could instead do this to it, like so. And we have a different kind of knot. And there's nothing I can do with this to make it look like this. These are two distinct kinds of knots. Um, so there are many ways to represent different kinds of knots, but typically what's done is by seeing what, when you draw a diagram of the knot, what is the fewest number of times the knot can cross over itself? Uh, this one uh, crosses itself one, two, three times. And this is called the three one knot. And this one crosses itself four times and that's the figure eight knot. Now you might be wondering about that symbol one next to the number. Um, so for this given crossing number, there might be more than one way to tie a knot. So I can take a loop, pass the end through, pass the end through again the same way, and now I have a five crossing knot. But I can uh, make a loop, twist it around twice, excuse me, and send the end through, and now I have a different five crossing knot. So this one is called the five one, and this one is called the five two. They're two different knots that both have a minimum of five crossings. So the history of knot tabulation, which is a thing, um, goes back to Lord Kelvin, who the temperature scale is named after. And he had this uh, somewhat crazy idea that different types of atoms are actually different types of knot vortex loops in the ether tied into different knots. Um, this was totally wrong, but it led to the tabulation of different knot types at the same time as different element types were being tabulated. Uh, incidentally, the uh, creation of knotted vortex loops was actually achieved in 2013 by uh, Kleckner and Irvine, which is pretty cool. Um, so if we've introduced uh, the three, four, and five crossing knots, which there are one, one, and two respectively, uh, if we keep going, there are um, three knots with six crossings, seven knots with seven crossings, and then, excuse me, 21 knots with eight crossings. And after that, it starts to get out of hand. Uh, there are nine knots, or 49 knots with nine crossings. And then it was thought there are 166 knots with 10 crossings. Um, this was the case for a few decades until it was realized by a guy named Perko that two of the knots in this table were actually the same knot that were just folded around into different configurations. So we now know that there are uh, only 165 knots with 10 crossings. So as knot tabulation got more and more advanced, um, eventually people wanted to take it to the next level. And to figure out exactly how many knots there are up to a certain amount of crossings, uh, there were these three, three researchers who worked in two teams in secret from one another, trying to figure out exactly how many knots there are uh, up to a certain number of crossings. Um, all the mathematical techniques, the computational techniques they used to generate these knots, as well to determine whether there were duplicates, like there was with the uh, 10 crossing knots, I won't get into. But the result they reached in 1998 was that there are uh, up to 16 crossings, there are 1,701,931 mathematically distinct types of knots. Um, mentioned that the number of different knots for a given crossing number increase um, dramatically. Uh, of those 1.7 million, about 1.4 million of them have 16 crossings. And nobody knows how many 17 crossing knots there are because, well, nobody has put in the effort. So uh, in addition to just 
saying that, okay, we have a big number of knots that we know about. Uh, these researchers also tabulated an entire database of all the different properties of those knots. This has been useful for knot theory, which is a field of mathematics, uh, because there are a lot of unproven conjectures. And one of the ways to disprove a conjecture is to just check every of these 1.7 million knots and seeing if there's a uh, counterexample, as uh, this paper below me points out, finding one specific knot that doesn't untie the way people thought knots had to untie. Now, this number, uh, 1,701,938, um, it's not some like fundamental mathematical constant. It represents the limit of human ambition and computational power as it existed in 1998. Um, it's possible to take it to the next level, but I guess people haven't deemed that worth the commitment. Uh, if we met an alien race who also looked into knot theory, they might not find that same specific number when they undertook a similar project. Um, but because this number only goes up to 16 crossings, it's very feasible, for example, if you pull your headphones out of your pocket, you could have a knot that is more complex than anything in this database. Um, so that's all I have to say. That's my favorite number above a million right now.